Hello and welcome back to The Top Shelf, my Criterion Collection Review Series. This is episode 69. I'll give you a second to get your giggles out of the way. Uh, we're taking a look at my uh, brand new Blu-ray that I got. My name is Ernest Whiteman III. I'm a Northern Repo filmmaker, artist, writer, and media educator. And we're taking a look at the top shelf of my uh, video collection and my Criterion Collection. Now. Every time there's the Fable sale at Barnes & Noble uh, for the 50% off all Criterion uh, DVDs and Blu-rays, I'm always at a loss or I'm at a, I have a conundrum. Uh, recently I upgraded to Blu-ray, which is I know a long time coming, I'm about 10 years behind the times, but uh, I do love physical media and um, we're getting to uh, have a high definition television here and a Blu-ray seems almost standard now. And I've been waiting for the price to come down. But every time the sale comes up, I'm in a conundrum. As you can see, I have a vast collection of DVDs in my, blue, uh, my Criterion collection. So my choice is always, do I upgrade uh, the movies I do have, the films I do have, or do I buy something entirely new? Now, I do not mind owning more than one piece of media. Uh, say uh, the Star Wars or Seven Samurai. If I can get another version of, you know, a film that I really enjoy, um, I don't mind owning more than one uh, copy or particular format. Say for Star Wars, I have the uh, VHS tapes, I have the DVDs, and now I have a Blu-ray collection of them. So there, there's nothing. Uh, I was going to say there's nothing wrong with it which there isn't, but um, I do enjoy physical media and I know that when the Wi-Fi breaks down, streaming never works, so it's always good to have a physical media uh, on hand as a backup. So where does this, all of this top front discussion lead us? Well, for the recent sale, I, and with the store closing in the neighborhood, um, I was sort of pressed before the sale ended to grab something. Um, but I couldn't make up my mind which. There was a lot of films that I wanted, but I also wanted to upgrade uh, the DVDs I did have. In the end, I opted to upgrade something. So, that brings us to today's selection. Um, we have Them Vendors Until the End of the World on Blu-ray. And uh, this is uh, probably one of my second most favorite film. Everything I said about the film, I said in the uh, DVD version of this. There's nothing really more I can add um, other than it has a great soundtrack. Um, and if you can find that, please, please do get it. Um, I know sometimes the Blu-rays come with a little bit of an extra extra. So we're gonna break out the glasses and um, I'll tell you what's, what it's all about. So until the end of the world, by Vem Vendors is from 1991. It's 287 minutes, which is nearly five hours. Uh, 5.1 stereo, uh, English, French, and German with English subtitles. So 1.66 to one aspect ratio. So there'll be thin bars at the top and the bottom. And this is for a two disc uh, edition. This uh, Blu-rays hold a lot more data on them, um, but uh, the DVD version was a three disc monstrosity. Uh, of course, this is a 4K digital restoration uh, commissioned by Vendors himself and uh, supervised by the director uh, with Y5.1 stereo sound, um, a new introduction by Vendors, interviews with Vendors about the film's soundtrack, which is always a good thing to watch, a new conversation between Vendors and musician David Byrne, which is another great thing to watch. I think I mentioned that last time. Uh, Japanese behind the scenes uh, program talking about how they achieved the, the digital effects. Um, that's really interesting to see how he did that, how he sort of uh, put all that together. Interview with vendors from 2001, up and down, under, Roma, again, another interview with uh, vendors. Uh, the song, which is about um, I Love You Till the End of the World by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Um, deleted scenes. I know it's five hours, but you know, uh, there are some deleted scenes, a trailer plus the attendant or additional essays. Um, 
the one song that is, there's two songs that are not on the soundtrack, and I mentioned the first, the first one last time, which is uh, Breaking the Rules of the Game by Robbie Robertson. And it's a nice sort of denouement moment for the story. And the other one is The Blood of Eden, by, uh, which is a studio recording by Peter Gabriel, which uh, he doesn't have it on any other, uh, he doesn't have this version on any other of his albums, um, as I think he sang it as a duet. Uh, on the studio releases he did do. I'll have to look into that. But uh, Ven Venders, um, I was first introduced to him through Wings of Desire and uh, the small uh, hometown video shop that uh, was in Riverton, Wyoming. And as I looked into more of his, uh, his work, I come across things like Until the End of the World, which I saw was a sci-fi. I was really into sci-fi at the time, so I thought I'd look it up found it, watched it, loved it, but I found out it was a three-hour version. Then a few years ago they released the director's cut, which is a five-hour version, which I saw in the theater, was not bored by it, um, but I have come to enjoy a lot of um, Fem Vendor's work, Paris, Texas. Uh, I love the Buena Vista Social Club, which I covered also. Uh, I do not have Paris, Texas, so stay tuned for that. Maybe I'll get that sooner or later. Um, but what more can I say about the story? It's a round the world road movie. Um, it's very prescient about some of the technologies that we'd be using uh, in the future. And overall, a really good story. And I can't wait to see it on what it looks like in Blu-ray form. And I think that's it for now. Spine number 1007. Um, as, again, as uh, I pick up new um, discs, I will be recording a video. I don't think I'll put a cap on this series like I did with the, the book series, um, but also stay tuned for a couple of reviews I'm going to be having out uh, in sort of in the vein of uh, the Wind River review that I did about two years ago. Uh, the first one will be on Bone Tomahawk and I will have a sort of um, look at uh, actress Setsuko Hara uh, in Tokyo's story. So stay tuned for those, and I will see you next time. Thanks.